Hey guys, let's talk about Vortex Ring State. This is that thing that kills pilots, both virtual and real, when they come in for a landing and then suddenly fall them, find themselves falling out of the sky at a rate they can't arrest and nothing they do seems to matter and the helicopter just shakes its way all the way down to the earth and then this happens, or worse. So we're going to talk about what causes vortex ring state, why it's called vortex ring state. We're going to talk about how to recover from it and how to avoid it. So let's get started. So vortex ring state is a fun state where your rate of descent is so high that you can no longer generate the lift required to enter a hover. In fact, it would take double the regular amount of power needed to enter a hover to escape vortex ring state. And at least according to Wikipedia, only the S64 Skycrane, only one helicopter is known to be able to have that much power and to be able to power out of vortex ring state on its own. So for everything else, especially a heavy troop transport slash cargo transport helicopter like the HIP here, if you don't have the altitude to recover properly, you're done. And this is, like I said, this is what's going to kill a lot of new pilots who pick this helicopter up and then can't figure out why they're dying every time they try to land. So let's talk about it. So Vortex Ring State is named for the vortices that are created in this particular condition of flight. So if we look here at the wingtips, I hope you can see the mouse in this video. I'm going to double check. Uh, no, I don't think you oh, There it is. Okay. So if you look at all the blade tips, all five of them here, each one uh, will generate a little bit of vortex of air where air coming down across the blade will then just loop around and come back and go down again. And it will loop around like this and create a vortex at the tip of each blade. So there's one there, there's another one happening up here and here and so on for each one of the blades. This happens in fixed wing as well. So in regular airplanes at the very tips of the wings, they get this little bit of circulating air which decreases the efficiency of the aerofoil, the, the wing surface here at the very end. And that's pretty normal. But what happens in vortex ring state is you get the same thing starting to happen in here at the root of each blade. And the reason for that is there's no aerofoil. So you can see here where there's a surface that's going to generate lift all along here, but then it stops in around the hub area and it's not going to generate any lift here. So if you start to fall fast enough in this helicopter, air is going to start to wash up from underneath and through here, and there's no lift being generated in this area because there's no aerofoil, no wing surface of any kind, and it's going to come up, and it's going to get sucked into right here, and through, it's going to get pulled down with the rest of the air being pulled down by the rotor blades. So it'll go down, and then it'll come back up, and it'll go down and it'll come back up and it creates this vortex, this loop here. So now you have reduced efficiency at the tip of the blade and you have reduced efficiency at the root of the blade and it makes you lose a whole lot of lift. Now only the center section of the blade here is generating any lift and you need more and more power to get out of the situation. If the pilot adds collective, so increases the uh, angle of these blades, which I can't do because I don't have power right now, um, it makes it worse. It creates larger vortices and then less. So these wingtip ones get larger and the root ones get larger and less and less of the blade is actually generating lift and you continue to fall faster and faster and faster. So I've just inadvertently given you the wrong thing to do if you fall into vortex ring state. So we've uh, covered what exactly happens, but why is it called vortex ring state? And the reason for that is really, really simple. So you have a vortex here, and you have a vortex here, and you have a vortex here, and here, and here, and then you also have the ones at the root of each blade. So that's fine, but then remember that these blades move. So they're spinning around in a big circle, and the vortices follow it. And what happens when you take something like a like one of those glowy wristbands and bring it around in a circle. It makes a ring shape. So it's referring to the vortices that create this ring shape as they travel around and then one in the middle as well. So you're, you've got two rings of vortices and you're losing efficiency because they're 
eating the efficiency of your aerofoil, of your wing surface, your lift surface. So what ends up happening is uh, if you descend fast enough to create these inner wing root or blade root vortices, you're not going to be able to power out of it anymore, not unless you're flying a sky crane. And the, the solution to it is really, really, really simple. It's just you need to get out of this disturbed air where it's circling around and into fresh air where it's not so much of a problem anymore. And all you do is just lean your cyclic uh, either forward, aft, left or right, doesn't matter which way you need to go. You just need to get out of this column of air where you no longer have the efficiency to generate lift. So let's start up our helicopter and we'll get in the air and we'll show you some examples of it because I'm sure this was clear as mud so far. Now if I take the hover control off and I start to descend a little bit, I'm going to descend slowly, but I'm going to show you what happens if you let your descent rate get out of control. So we're fine at one meter per second descent, fine at two, at any point here we still have the ability to just add some collective and, and arrest our descent. I bring the collective down again. Right around four meters per second. That's pretty much our limit, depending on our weight. If I let it go any lower than that, to around five, you feel that buffeting, and then the descent rate starts to plummet. So within seconds, the descent rate's down to 10 meters per second, and it's going to drop much further. Now, the instinctive thing to do in this situation is going to be to add collective, so let's do that. Add collective. You can hear the engine trying, but it's not really changing anything. I'm still descending at 10, 11 meters per second here. So, all this does when you add collective is just make the problem worse. As I mentioned in the first part of the video, all it does is increase the size of those vortices and reduce the amount of the blade that's actually generating lift. So, this is not what you want to do. It's not going to get you out of the situation it's only going to make it worse. What you do want to do is reduce your collective sum to avoid overspeed and then get out of this column of disturbed air that's causing you problems. So cyclic input in any direction, just get out of here. So I'm going to do cyclic forward, enter a bit of a dive nose down and move out of the air and I'm going to reduce my collective and within a few seconds you should see and feel the buffering go away. Or the buffeting, I mean. Reduce collective. Try to enter a bit of a dive here. Get some movement out of this column of air. There we go. And now I can add my collective back and I've arrested my descent. I can start climbing again. So that's really all there is to getting out of VRS, is just get out of this column of air that's causing you problems and move into fresh, clean air. Now the problem is going to be, what's your altitude like? The lower you are to the ground, the less time you have to respond and the less room you're going to have to maneuver. If you're down at treetop height and you're coming in you know, on a vertical landing surrounded by trees or apartment buildings or something, and you don't have room to move left or right or forward or backwards because you're in a confined space, that's it. That's why it's so important to control your descent on vertical landings, especially when you're heavy. Okay, so we are in a sufficiently overloaded helicopter here. 
We've got rocket pods and bombs and door gunners and a full tank of fuel. We are heavy. We've got armor plates on and everything. And I want to just demonstrate how easy it is for someone to slip into VRS, especially when they're loaded up like this. Alright, so you're cruising along here, and you're thinking, oh crap, there comes my landing zone. I need to slow down, like, now. So you dump your collective, and you lean back on the cyclic, and you really try to bleed off that airspeed as fast as you can without climbing like crazy. And the airspeed starts to come down, and then, oh, you realize you're falling out of the sky now, so you go to add some collective, but it's too late and you can't power out of it and there goes your generators and if you're lucky maybe you'll make it and no. Boom. This is more of the best case scenario. So that's a best case scenario for a lot of new pilots when they get going. They try to slow themselves down. They react when they see that they're falling out of the sky when they're descending and they start adding collective to try to counter it. But by then it's too late. They've entered vortex ring state. This isn't the way out of it. It just makes the stall worse. And they come down hard like this. They lose the tail. If you're lucky, this is all that happens and you can walk away from this. If you're not, well, there's a tree right over there that we could have crashed into instead. Or if we had been just a little higher when we entered VRS, we'd be dead. So that's a look at what happens to a lot of new pilots because they aren't expecting VRS to happen when they lose that forward airspeed and they don't compensate before it happens. You have to add that collective before you see the descent rate starting to get out of control. And that descent rate here on your vertical velocity indicator, this is your limit, four meters per second down. And you need to be arresting it well before that, especially if you're heavy, you need to be stopping it here and controlling that very carefully. So that's vortex ring state. I should mention that there are actually three conditions required for it to happen. The first is that the aircraft has to be in powered flight. Your engine has to be what's spinning the main rotor disc. If that's not the case and you're in auto rotation, uh, as we mentioned in the auto rotation video, that's where air uh, washing up from below the helicopter through the blades and upwards is what's causing them to rotate and spin. You can't enter vortex ring state in an auto rotation. So it has to be the other way where you're inducing your sucking air down through the rotor blades to generate lift from the engine and transmission. So that's the first condition. Uh, you have to be powered, you're not in auto rotation. The second condition is you need a relatively high rate of descent, which in the hip it's four meters per second. Exceeding that uh, is enough for a vortex ring state to begin. That's where your root wing root vortices will begin. And the third condition is the aircraft has to be traveling at a slow enough forward speed. So this is less than 30 kilometers per hour or so, 30 or 40. It's when you transition out of effective translational lift and you're starting to look to uh, transition into a hover. So that's when, when you lose that ETL, the effective translational lift, that your um, blade efficiency drops dramatically and you need a lot more collective, a lot more power to stay in the air. And that's where you're likely to start entering VRS. As long as you're moving forward and you have ETL, you have nothing to worry about because you won't be staying in any column of air long enough. You won't be creating those wing root vortices. Um, that's why during the landing video, we talk about trying to stay, uh, trying to maintain effective translational lift as long as possible, because as long as you have that, you're not risking VRS. So those are your three conditions. Uh, we've talked about how to recognize it how to um, escape it. But honestly, the best way to deal with vortex ring state is just to not get into it in the first place. It's just to avoid it. And for that, you need to be one step ahead of the helicopter. You need to know what's coming. You need to add collective before you start descending and you need to be very careful to watch that descent rate. 
So hopefully that all made sense. Uh, if I missed something, if I got something wrong, please let me know down below in the comments, and I will see you guys next time.